Welcome back to stage three of the JLU 3.0 trail truck build. So as you can see here, we've got the parts laid out for this final push, and this stage is gonna really involve electronics, uh, wiring, switching, LEDs, and some more scale accessories. So we'll just run through real quick uh, what's laid out here. So of course, we've got the Three Tick Lizard, we've got the Fly Sky, FSBS 6 six channel receiver. So that's going to go in. I've got the Club 5 cyclical switch with an A and a B channel to run lights and switch those from the receiver. I've got this Hey OK uh, five way distribution block. So this should be a real space saver as well for wiring. And then you can see in the back, I've got all the LEDs that came with the various, like the bumper, the light buckets, the Jeep. So I can use those, uh, I may or may not, um, like the rear lights don't have plugs, the front bumper lights are really short. Um, so I've got my usual assortment of LEDs from Evan Design. So I've got cool whites, warm whites, reds, um, plenty. And these have really thin wires. And since I usually am gonna wire up my own links, custom to where my plugs are, um, I may use those instead, so I've got some shrink wrap as well, um, so we'll just see when we get to LEDs. And then uh, I guess before that, we've got to get on some scale accessories and things to mount LEDs in. So I've got a light bar and uh, some other lights here, uh, roof rack, some scale accessories. So we'll get into that a little more uh, as we go. All right, first little thing we'll get into here is the uh, roof rack. So this roof rack is actually this roof rack basket that sits in this exo cage uh, frame. So you remember, I did not use it on the night crawler. I used just crossbars. So I had this guy sitting here. I wasn't originally thinking a roof rack for this guy, trying to keep it a little bit lighter and lower CG, um, but I just can't help myself with Jeeps putting a roof rack on there. So I've already cut off the nubs on the side that would have mounted into these uh, exo cage bars. And I've actually already clipped the back rack off of it because I wanted to make it more of a flat rack, um, more like the ARB style. I just have kind of the front and they're, they're cut flat for like a rooftop tent. Um, and then of course this already came with mounting holes as well as those side pegs. So I've got some of these plastic mofo washer spacers and I've got some little bolts and little micro nuts. So that should be easy to kind of space up off the roof, roof a little bit and uh, mount. So that's the roof rack that we're gonna be using. Okay, the next little piece of uh, lighting detail if you remember this light pod that I had kind of made up uh, working with the seller that made this rack, he designed this functional light pod bar with lenses and back buckets for the LEDs. Um, and when he initially sent me that, he sent me three sets of lenses. So you can see I mix and matched here. And then I got another light pod and used the KC grill lenses on this Jeep. So that left me with one set of mixed lenses left. So I reached out to him and said, hey, I wanna do something new, something different. I don't wanna do that same light bar again or that same cage. Um, what about ditch lights? So I started talking to him about designing some ditch lights and he promptly came up with a really nice little design here so this will screw into the side of the fender, kind of like the RC four-wheel drive uh, snorkel mounts. And then this light pod is basically the same as these. It's just uh, detachable. You can swivel it. It's got the same back bucket and it accepts the same lenses. So that is going to go on each side. So he sent me uh, several of these to kind of play with. Um, so we're going to get some ditch lights on this guy. So that'll be neat. That's something brand new. 
The second little bit of light in here is a new light bar for me. So for this one, I went back to the designer of the first light bar I ever used, which was uh, this flat bar style on the first JLU trail truck. And that was uh, from an eBay designer. So I went back to him and got his kind of pod style and it mounts the same way. It's got a full kind of backing plate that goes uh, on the inside and also acts as kind of a washer and a template to line up your holes. So it'll mount through the roof and then uh, no back caps. Um, LEDs will come out the back. All of these pop in to the rack. So they may, right now they stay in there. They do swivel, so I may end up putting a little glue to keep those in. Um, there we go, yeah. So probably a little something maybe to keep those in. So I'm gonna try that. These are glow-in-the-dark lenses as well. Um, and then also the same seller, I went back to him and got some more tools. Um, he makes the little ax, the shovel on the other side of this, and these little S clips that clipped onto this rack perfectly, those bars. So I got some more, um, I had some extra S clips and then I got the shovel and ax and then the last episode I painted those up. And uh, you can see I've got some S clips already installed on the high lift. And this high lift was actually um, left over a couple of builds ago. Uh, it wasn't, wasn't that one. It was from this seller that made this rack that I bought, uh, this, this seller is out of Australia, but he sent me a red and a black high lift and I mixed and matched the handles. So this is the black with the red handle, that's the red with the black handle. So again, I already had it, so I've got to put it to good use. So it's going on here. And then I've got a few little uh, more scale detail surprises that'll uh, fill out the rack and whatnot, but uh, that's gonna kinda be the, the lighting, I think, on this one, of course, we'll have the headlights, tail lights, and then the front and rear bumper lights as well. So I'm gonna dive into this guy. I'm not sure where we're gonna start, but we're gonna get going. And here we are with the completed install of the roof rack. Went on super easy. Ended up using two of those MoFo uh, plastic washer spacers to get it up off the roof a little. And then you can see I've got the tools S clipped on there around the edge of the rack. And I really like those little S clips. They're super handy at this scale. So I think that does it for the roof rack. Um, there's those little micro nuts in there. This thing is secure, it's not going anywhere. So I think the next uh, few holes we're gonna poke in the body are gonna be for the uh, light bar here. So we're gonna have to mount that, and then uh, eventually it's gonna get, what, five holes for the LED wiring. And then after that, we're gonna look at the dish lights, and I think that's gonna be the last little bit. Uh, we've got a mount to the body, and the rest of it's really just gonna be uh, wiring and soldering. Got the uh, ditch lights mounted and I shoe good on the amber lenses. So those are looking good. And then I've got the uh, light bar drilled and mounted and I went ahead and uh, put a little shoe goo to attach these light pods to the light bar and get all of the grills horizontally aligned. So that's all good to go. Um, I just need to drill my holes for all my uh, lights coming out of that light bar and I'm gonna have to do the same for these uh, ditch lights they've got a little cut out here you can see and it looks like they're gonna just miss the interior tray hopefully if not I'll just clip that corner behind the dash but uh, so I think we're kind of ready to wire LEDs, except we don't have anywhere to go with them. So I think the next order of business is getting the electronics in this and finding a home for everything. And then we'll know where to route our LEDs and then we can install those. We have a little bit of progress here. 
Got everything in here and tested. Got the firmware updated on the Lizard. Got the servo trimmed out, the dual rate adjusted and the endpoints adjusted on each side. And I forgot just how awesome this Surpass motor is. I mean, this is as good or better than the Komodo. The downfall of this is it has bulky uh, bullet connectors, whereas the Komodo has nice, thin, flexible wires. So we're tested, we're good to go. So I think we're ready to double side this stuff in and give it its home, which should not be an issue. Um, this is going to mount in exactly the same as the Silver Jeep. It's the same setup. So the receiver is going to tuck under the battery tray back here, right behind the transmission. Uh, Lizard is going to go right here along the side. Switch is going to be over here. So I think we're going to get all this stuff mounted and then we'll move into the uh, LED wiring and get that stuff situated. All right. It is all tidied up. You can see it's an art to getting all that uh, routed and looped. But um, sitting in there nice and low. And then the Club 5 switch kind of routes under the tray. And it's that last white, red, and black cord that kind of holds everything down. And then I've got that Hey OK distribution block here. Um, and yeah, I could run all the lights out of the receiver, but this makes it a lot easier to get to them, to unplug them if I need to take the body off. Um, just one kind of loose point. Um, and this thing is, you know, it's loose in there. So I think that'll work out well just for access. Um, I did the same kind of thing on this uh, silver Jeep with uh, splitters. But uh, it's just a mess to get in here, so that makes it really easy um, because the body is something that may go off and on. All right, so here's kind of a quick comparison of the two. And you can see the similarities here. So where I've got the Hey OK distribution block here at the back, this is what I was talking about. I've got just a splitter here. So that goes to my tail lights and my headlights. So that's one point to unplug the body shell. And then the other point would be the club five over there, but that's easy to get to on the side. So that's the light bar. So I think this one's a little bit cleaner overall, a little bit tighter, but of course I had a nice uh, template to go by which is always helpful uh, the Bluetooth no longer has the antenna which is kind of interesting the new ones don't but uh, other than that pretty pretty similar install all right I've got the bumper off prepping to start on those LEDs since those are chassis mounted but uh, while it's off I decided to look at putting on uh, a limiting rubber band here I've got some little plastic washers and hardware. So I actually drilled a hole in the ESC tray right down the middle with a pin vise. And uh, so I can go from there straight down to that three link mount to the servo tray. And hopefully that should help remedy. I mean, you can see it right there, some of this unloading. Keep the body from raising. I mean, this is a brass axle, so there's no way to keep the axle from dropping. But if we can keep the body from lifting, that should help. All right, I've got this plugged up to give it a little test here. See how we have limited this uh, unloading here. Quite a bit. So you can see how they're reacting. They're wanting to unload, but then they're getting sucked back in that rubber band down the middle. So that should not affect any kind of uh, flex since that's a pivot in the middle. And it doesn't. Yeah, I mean, everything moves super loose. We'll run that one more time here. 
you can see they want to and then they, uh, they get pulled back in. Alright, so I think that's as long as I can delay before I start soldering and wiring LEDs. Well, I lied. Found one more little thing to tweak before jumping into the LEDs. So you can see here, the battery tray has a little mod to it. Went out in the garage, got the Dremel after it. So I was having, uh, I was bottoming out there with the link riser on the bottom of the tray. So now that gives me full compression here. I think I was lacking maybe maybe three or four millimeters. I was hitting somewhere around there, you can see. So now I can get all the way down. So <clears throat> hopefully this will be the end of the suspension tuning. So the rear, uh, there's still some down travel. Uh, the front is full droop. There was maybe three millimeters of shaft. Uh, you know, it was sitting about here maybe but with that rubber band limiter on the middle, it's you know fully sucked down. So I'll be riding pretty low. Um, you can see the links are basically horizontal, those high clearance. Um, so anyways, let's move on. All right, bumper lights, good to go. Got the warm whites in there for the fog. The uh, routing I ended up doing a little different than I was planning. Instead of going to the uh, distribution block back here, I went directly to the receiver. As you can see, I came up, came together right here, and I kind of tucked it down in that cavity, and then over the top, tight, and then right here. So it's still easy to get to. It's on top. It's still tucked low. Um, and then I'll save this distribution block to grab things coming from kind of the rear and the body shell. So that's the progress right there, but first set of lights are a success, so we're going to move right along. All right, back with a little progress here. So I've got my dish lights assembled, tested, and I've got the back buckets shoot in place. So those are ready to go. <clears throat> I had to clearance uh, those rear fenders a little more. Once I got my rear LEDs kind of test fitted, I've got kind of an old dead one in here as a test fitter. But you can see it sticks out of that back bucket just a hair. Um, so I had to account for that on each side to get the shell to close. So that's good to go. Um, the light bar is prepped and ready and tested. Got all the shrink wrap on that. Um, it's looking really good. And then the body, I've got all my holes popped in here. My dish lights. Those ended up being pretty large holes for the dish light wires because the height that those sit, and if you come straight down, it basically that resistor sits kind of half in and half out of the body there. Um, so with that resistor having to go through there, that ended up being a larger hole where these are smaller because the resistor is further up and so it's just the wires going through here. But I was lucky and I missed the interior tray, so that worked out super nice. So. That's the progress. I'm going to start chopping up some servo extensions and soldering up some whips. All right, the light bar is a success. Got that hooked up. Um, so as always, I'm coming down this back corner and then I've just got it connected to a little servo extension. Plugged up here. Um, 
So it's gonna kind of just route route back there. Um, I don't have the tray in, of course, for the interior. So I got to do the other rear lights, but uh, this first one is a success. So maybe I'll throw a battery in here and show it to you. Just lay that guy in. Turn it on. There we go. Look at that. Sweet. So switched on, switched off. So that'll be switchable with the dish lights. So success there. Moving on. Nothing like some brittle plastic to slow you down. So both of these little light pods in the bumper, uh, the retainer clips on one side have popped because this plastic is not flexible at all. So a little dab of shoe goo and uh, let each side set up for a minute and then reinstall those. But just, man, for a bumper that looks so good, it's got a lot of problems. Tail yeah, lights a success. Bumper lights look great. So we are moving on to the last two. We've got ditch lights and we've got headlights. And that's it. But man, these look awesome. Well, it's back on. So you know what that means. We're done with lights. Look at that. So nice. Got the rear. Super cool. Ditch lights in full effect. That is awesome. Very happy with those. Sweet. All right. So moving right along, I think there's going to be a little more scale detail needed. Okay, rooftop tent in full effect. So I've got that guy attached to the rack. I've got these little S clips, I think four of those on the bars, and then I've got the rubber bands hooked on those. So it's attached, but it's got a little flex. So that is just super cool. So moving right along, I'm not sure what's next, but something. All right, we made it to the end. So we're at the way in and I don't think I'm going to show it to you just yet. I've added a few more little details and I think I'm going to make you wait for the reveal, but we will go ahead and weigh it so we can see if we're going to need to tune it a little. So this is with the stock battery as it will be running. So we'll let that settle. 
So these start at 7.3 ounces. So we're up to 19.4 ounces. And uh, not a bad front ratio, but I'd like to be higher than that 53%. So we're gonna flip over to grams. So we are, we'll call that 550 grams. So this is with the brass front axle, brass steering tray, brass knuckles, but without the uh, brass extension weights. I swapped those in the front to just the extended hexes that are brass, but they don't have near as much weight as those big discs. So I think I'm going to look at putting those uh, hex weight extensions back on the front two wheels to see if we can get a little more front weight bias. Uh, than that 52%. So let me make that swap real quick and then we'll do one more way. All right, just quick shot of these uh, weighted brass hex extensions I'll be putting back on the front wheels, these NHX. I had taken those off previously and replaced them with uh, these just brass hex extensions to lessen the weight at the wheels, but it looks like from the final weigh-in, we're gonna to wanna to add that uh, percentage back to the front. So I'll be putting these big ones back on there. Well, that's brought our percentage forward to 55%. So that's a little bit better. Um, the only other thing I could do would be to add uh, full send inner wheel weights but I do not think they would fit with those extended brass uh, hex weights. So this may be the maximum, but this front end is getting pretty heavy as is. So I think we'll see how we do at this 55, 45 percentage. Let me flip over to ounces. So we're at 20.3 ounces. So we've almost tripled it, uh, knowing that it starts at 7.3 two or 7.3 ounces. But uh, at least most of that weight is low down. So hopefully that'll help. And this definitely sits lower than any of my other Jeeps. So that should give it an advantage as well. But uh, man, this thing looks good. But you're gonna have to wait as usual for the reveal video. So stay tuned. That should be coming soon and hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching.